No, few, few quick questions if somebody has. You know, without discussion, I think it becomes monologue. If there are any quick questions. So, a uh, very wonderful talk on ESGs. So, I am from Academia. Would you please uh, highlight, because we need a huge human resource for implementing ESGs. So, how Academia can uh, play a role in that uh, for generating skilled human resource? Because uh, what kind of courses, diplomas or masters or like what kind of things you have on your mind uh, so that we can have skilled manpower for that? Yeah. See, what I see, uh, see ESG compliance, the one is uh, some scientific approach where the, say, technological driven, you know, the initiative, that is the one part where R&D, engineering and everything will come into picture. So other part is to invoke the inner consciousness, which is the spirituality part of it. You know, the edge against the need of a single vehicle, we have two, two, three, three, four, four vehicles. We are very insensitive to the environment and all. So no kind of a study and all perhaps would help much. Then, you know, the to awaken your inner, the spirit and, you know, the means how this practice can be propagated is something, you know, the whether it is at the academy level or otherwise, you know, the one has to really see. So to me, so one is the science driven and another is to, you know, to invoke and uplift the inner uh, consciousness so that this waste is the practice of the circular economy, what, you know, like using, reusing and the recycling and then, you know, the avoid uh, unnecessarily excessive uh, the consumption, which is a big, big burden on the environment and the society. Yeah, Thank but you. still, you know, like sustainability, on sustainability, there are many courses which are running uh, with particular relation to circular economy, which you are saying. And today there is a culture of buy to get four, you know. But still, you know, for I feel there is still lack on ESG, you know, awareness among the masses. So if some kind of course or curriculum can be designed, that would be great. No, I agree with you. Yeah. See, the ESG journey has just begun. It is just a beginning though, you know, the, we've been talking for last maybe, you know, the 10, 15 years. So you, anything to introduce in any economy, you know, the, the ones is the persuasive method which the government has been doing in a voluntarily and all. Now it has been mandated. So it will not only, you know, uh, just to develop the expertise, but even from the, the professional career point of view, where they're going to more and more scope. That today it's 1,000 companies and, uh, you know, the, we understand the government is thinking to the extend the applicability to even SME sectors also. Then, of course, even from the professional opportunity, from the environment, societal, and the governance perspective, we, you, we would need the skilled and, you know, the trained manpower. This is where, you know, the uh, all the academias and the center of excellence and all, all these institutions would uh, support. So, yes. Uh, university and the academic uh, institution, you know, the, with the, you know, the bringing out uh, such the courses and, uh, you know, the, that would help to provide uh, a skilled and the trained manpower. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, if there are... Good evening, sir. My name is Anand Gopinath from BPCL Kochi Refinery. We were talking about the renewable system, solar system and everything. And uh, whatever the new technologies like uh, green energy, energy efficiency, everything is more suitable for the system of domestic appliances. But for the industries like oil and gas, which is running for 24 into 7, how this, uh, because those industries are in the main parameter is the reliability. How we are going to sustain with that reliability, with the uh, re renewable resources? Dr. Sharma, you would take that question? Uh, see, the, the point is, I mean, um, as we move on, we'll become, you know, any industry we might be dealing with will become more, you know, dependent on the energy through electricity means. And in fact, electricity growth will be much faster than any industrial growth for that matter. So when electricity become cleaner and electricity become carbon neutral or carbon free, it also adds automatically to any industrial process because you're going to use more and more electricity. 
And as far as the other processes are concerned, we are focused only on the electricity generation. So we have to fine tune the, the technology, the processes, and what all can be done uh, in terms of you know, cleaning and in terms of the carbon neutrality. As for example, I'll, uh, I mean, I don't want to go into the technical this thing, but for example, the, the entire efficiency of the electricity generation is driven by the Carnot theorem and the Carnot cycle. So that particular thing would not be applicable in the other processes. So there might be something else. So it, of course, we have to explore and find out the other ways, but I think electricity will be the um, solid plank or the, or the foundation stone for the rest of the industry in terms of the carbon neutrality. Because Thank you. Because why I'm Thank asking you. this? I, th I, think, I think we'll have to stop, you know. You can continue discussion one-on-one -on -one later on. Uh, at this time now to sum up, uh, the discussions. I'll request Dr. Arno if you have some closing remarks. Uh, both the sessions were very enriching and very insightful. And uh, as an academician, I just wanted to say that since just now Professor Sharma also said the next generation is going to, you know, achieve that milestone of 2070 carbon neutrality. So definitely, we all need to train our younger generations and take, you know, build and nurture this consciousness and sensitivity towards environmental sustainability because the, those are our, I mean, our young generation are the future ambassador, our brand ambassadors to, you know, kind of achieve this. So with this, with these remarks, I would like to hand over the mic to Sir for the concluding and final remarks. Thank you. Thank you, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, my compliments to both. Uh, the presenters uh, for these two sessions club together. Uh, this is extremely important subject. Uh, for a few years now, at least in the last five, six, seven years, uh, we have uh, realized that, uh, you know, this has become, uh, climate change has become a reality now. Uh, we have started feeling the pinch, uh, and therefore, uh, the last session, which talks about commitment and actions, is very, very relevant. Uh, I'm sure that we all are committed and uh, we understand what is to be done. You know, Dr. Sharma presented a uh, trajectory for uh, power sector. Uh, similarly, for various other sectors, we do have, you know, trajectories, uh, business as usual, and then different, uh, you know, paths that are available uh, to achieve or to minimize uh, GHG emissions. Uh, of course, uh, you know, country will have to make its choices based on various factors, and we are doing that, those who are concerned are very carefully you know, examining all these aspects, uh, different paths that are available, uh, what are their feasibilities. Uh, there has to be uh, cost optimization. You can't follow a trajectory you know, which is too expensive and which you are not able to follow subsequently. Uh, there should be minimal disruptions. Uh, and then what is important is you know, when we choose the path or combination of these options that we have uh, for 2070 carbon neutrality, uh, we'll have to continuously keep ourselves upgraded our R&D, you know, should uh, be, you know, very actively participating. And if there are any, you know, it's a long period, not a very short period. So even if you're making projections, there could be, you know, things uh, which are not under your control. So we need to be, you know, ready to handle all those issues, which we have been able to do so far. So I'm sure with, uh, you know, continuously examining uh, different uh, trajectory paths that we have. And once we are committed, uh, there are policy interventions you have seen in the past also. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, initiatives uh, taken, uh, be it power sector, you know, there is solar uh, mission, there are different missions. So essentially we are working on a mission mode. Uh, circularity, you know, recently Ministry of Phenomenal Forest has brought out, you know, EPR, regulate, EPR regime, which is very strict, and then promoting more and more uh, reuse uh, of uh, waste material and minimizing on the resource consumption. So we are all working together, and I'm sure we will be able to achieve this, you know, our target of carbon neutrality by 2070. It's a long period, but with uh, committed policies, uh, scientific inputs, and then involvement of each and every stakeholder, uh, we should be able to do that, and we will have to do that, you know, for survival of our, uh, you know, the next generations uh, and their, uh, you know, happy life. So with this, we'll come, uh, I uh, will close this session and once again thank you very much uh, to the speakers and also to the co-chair and the wonderful audience. There were only two questions and uh, uh, 
very cooperative audience. Uh, thank you very much, and we look forward to now uh, 